Okay, what I'm going to do is convert this electric golf cart. It's an easy go from the 1970s. I'm going to convert it over to gasoline. I've cut out the battery box that was in here. It's kind of rusted out anyways. And uh, removed the electric motor from the rear end. And I'm going to show you what I'm about to do and how I'm going to convert this to gasoline powered. Alright, this is the old electric motor. Powered this easy go. And I pulled a rotor out of it. Put it on my bandsaw. I'll sh show some pictures of that later. But I uh, sawed off the end of this. It's mostly phenolic. It, go it cuts through pretty easily to get this gear off of here. And so that'll that'll interface with the transmission or the rear end. I'm gonna put this 16 horsepower engine that I bought at Lowe's for $375 free shipping. I've put a CV transmission or torque converter onto it. And that's a series 40. This is a 16 horsepower engine, if I didn't mention it. I've taken the air box off of it, replaced it with uh, something that breathes a little freer, taken off the exhaust, and I took off the gas tank that was mounted here just to lower the profile of the engine. I'll be mounting those things in other places. I've seen a few guys do the conversion before, and uh, there's one guy, pretty interesting, he, uh, he actually machined this groove in here just like I have I was gonna do it his way but I found a different way to do it and show you that but anyways I had to machine this groove into this transmission and so that this torque converter would slide down the shaft but I just did not like the way it hung out on the end of the shaft there's a lot of weight there's only a 5 8 inch shaft I just thought that putting the torque of a 16 horsepower engine onto this wasn't going to be sufficient. I mean, this thing was, I figured we were, I was going to bend that or break that off. So uh, I looked at it from a different point of view. Now this is the, um, the connector where the, from taking off the electric motor, fits onto the spline right here. And what I've done is I drilled out the center of it, 5 8 inch hole, so that I can put the input shaft of the transmission in there and then use the output shaft as my input from the motor that's going to be put in here. So, um, and then this will shift between forward and reverse. But that's how it's going to go, and the mount is going to bracket is going to come up from here. But I am going to change the length of this before I weld it on, weld this uh, spline adapter onto the shaft. Uh, I'm going to put the engine up on there and make sh and get the alignment for this sprocket. So that'll determine where I'm going to cut this shaft and weld on this spline and move this thing over if I have to. But first, the motor goes in. Okay, I've quickly mocked up the mounting. I got that uh, mounting plate from uh, who was uh, Go um, Go Power. Anyways, it was like twenty bucks. Fits the motor. I'm gonna add slots to it and everything. But just just mocking it up to see where it's supposed to go, so I can determine where I'm going to make cuts and uh, set things up for this. Okay, now I got this chain hoist set up and I'm going to lower the uh, engine down onto the mounts that I've got mocked up. They're all just bracketed in. Nothing's set in stone. I'm just taking measurements. Alright, this is what the engine looks, looks like after it's been dropped in place. Just trying to fit in here. Check this out. Um, the sprocket for the transmissions here, sprocket for the CVTs right around here. 
So I'm gonna take this cover off, try and move things around and see how much I have to lop off of here. And then build a bracket that goes to this axle and tie this up and make sure that it's all lined up. And there's clearance here for the shifter. There's a shifter. It shifts neutral, forward, reverse. And, and the chain will go from here up into the CVT. Right up in here. So I'll take this off and I'll put a chain on it and make sure that everything lines up and I'll cut this off little by little just to make sure everything's lined up perfectly and I've got my measurements for where I'm going to do all my welding for these brackets. Uh, the engine is being held up by chain. So um, it's just gently down on there and not supported by those that wood that you see there. So. Okay, the engine's been lined up, chained. I don't have to cut the shaft. Doesn't appear that way. I'm going to put some, some channel between here and the axle and um, weld it to the axle, weld it to this plate. And um, pretty much everything's lined up. Uh, this is the way the engine ends up sitting in here. Uh, pretty close on this side, uh, the uh, engine. But uh, still got plenty of clearance. And all i got to do is put a little bend around here. And I'll be able to put my filter out here in the back. And then I'll build a, um, a manifold. On, on this little flange. I'll cut a flange out for this and then weld pipe on here to build my exhaust that's going to come out the back. Uh, pretty simple. It's, it's just about in there. Uh, now some welding. Okay, I've hoisted the engine up off here. I just want you guys to take a look at how this thing's going to end up. Um, that's pretty much where the uh, bracket's going to land for the um, mounting for the engine and this is going to come out a little further it's only clamped up there and then I'm going to weld um, some square tubing from the frame down here so it's going to cradle the engine and it should give me enough room to still service the, um, the valves here so if I ever have to adjust the valves in the future I could do it in the cart I don't have to pull the engine out to do it all right, this is the uh, engine cradle welded in place. Everything's lined up, notched. One of the square tubings to clear the uh, rear end. And there it is, welded up. All right, this is uh, how I lined up the transmission, the reverse forward transmission. Use the coupler. I had to drill the coupler out. It was a 5 8 inch coupler, but the shaft coming out of the transmission is a 16 millimeter. It's just off by a few thousandths. I got a 16 millimeter drill and drilled about halfway through, and then these two spliced together and, of course, welded on that 5 8 inch shaft to the coupler for this transmission. And then we've got, I think this is a 12 tooth on here and a 12 tooth up there. Everything's lined up. Uh, I can access the, the uh, oil here and the drain, drain out the bottom. And uh, that's pretty much how this thing is going to roll. Oh, I'm also going to put a chain tensioner on, on this right here. So... It'll take the slack out, and there'll be more slack as the um, when the uh, com the suspension compresses. So, anyways, that's where we're at.
the gas was turned off. I don't know why, but I, I turned the switch off here and uh, it did not shut down. So I don't know what's going on with that. I'm gonna have to check the uh, check everything on this. But other than that, things uh, working according to plan. And it's just smoking some of the uh, the oil that was on the exhaust. And that's it. She's um, pretty tight. She works pretty good. She's not a speed demon. She's set up for uh, torque. And that's exactly what I wanted. The motor's pretty doggone smooth. And it fired right up. This is brand new out of the box. And... Um, it fired right up. I was quite impressed. And a lot of torque off the line. That's what I wanted. And it's just, this is just going to be for carrying pass, uh, passengers and corn out to the feeders at, the, at my uh, hunting property. So I'm going to put the body panels on and paint them and do all the other little things that need to get done to this. And she, it's a wrap.